Welcome back or welcome if you are new to another video. My name is Giselle. This is the kitchen Q&A that I promised you. Yes. Like always, I have the questions here. I typed out the questions and then I also typed out the answers so that it goes quicker. There's there's quite a few questions, which I don't mind. It's all good. So yes, if you ever see me looking down, I'm looking down and reading the questions. Grab yourself a drink. I have water and let's just get into the video. Where's my notebook? There are a few things that I want to explain before I get into the questions for the people that are new. When it comes to cook weeks, the ladies and the girls within the um, age range of 17 to 45 get put into groups of two and we each have a turn having a cook week and a bake week. And then we also have a head cook, so I guess technically we cook to three people. The amount of cook week and bake weeks that you have depends on the amount of ladies and girls you have within the age range of 17 to 45. How many cook weeks do we have? Our cook weeks went up recently, so I believe we are now at that point where we have 12 cook weeks. It's 31 degrees Celsius outside. It's hot. And when it comes to washing dishes, our ladies and girls are split into four groups and each week a different group takes turns washing the dishes. The number of dishwashing weeks depends on how many ladies and girls that you have. I know colonies that have five groups. I know colonies that have three. We have four. Yeah, that's how that works. People are always also curious about the shopping, how that works. For our colony, every week the cooks put together a list and the person in charge of the finances makes a trip and gets the ingredients that we need. And then every few weeks we put in an order for the rest of the ingredients that we need. It gets ordered and then it gets delivered. And that would be bulk things like um, oatmeal, wheat, spices, during the winter months is when we also put fruits and vegetables on that order. Yeah, ketchup, molasses, things like that. If during the week I need a basic ingredient, something like milk or eggs, it's always in the kitchen, in the fridge. It's there for you to take however much you need. You never take more than you need. If I'm in the mood for cereal and I'm out of milk, I just have to run to the kitchen and it's like two steps from my house. And also another thing, Things change from one colony to the next. The dishwashing and cook weeks part generally stay the same and there might be more things in here that stay the same but there's also a lot that changes. Question number one. I always wonder how you guys keep things organized. Like with that much food, how do you keep track of expiration dates and things like that to not be wasteful? So everything is labeled and has its own place in the kitchen. If you use something, you have to clean up behind yourself. And if you empty a certain ingredient, you have to fill it up again. This goes with the grocery shopping that I explained. We only order what we need. And because we are able to place an order every few weeks, with the amount of people that we have to feed, the produce that we order never gets close to the expiration date. And that is something that the head cook looks after. All the organizing, all the ordering, all the dates, things like that. After all, it's part of her job and she is the one that is always there in the kitchen. Number two, what is your biggest cooking and baking challenge so far? I've been thinking a while about this. If, if something comes to mind, I can add it into a future cook week, but as of right now, I can't think of anything. <laughs> Question number three, when do you plan your menus and do they ever change before the meal is made? On our colony, we like to plan the menu a few days before the cook week starts. And yes, they change often. It could be that we didn't have a specific ingredient or that the meal didn't work for a, that particular day. And there is, there is no set menu. The two people that are cooking get together with the head cook and decide what they want to serve for the upcoming week. Question number four. How do you determine if the community likes a new recipe? Do they come and tell you or can you see how much you have left over? People will tell you if they like it. I have actually never had anyone tell me that they don't like it. Usually they just won't say anything. Or, or they might say something like, it was a little bit too salty, which is helpful for the next time I make it. And you can also see by how much you have left over. Question number five. Do you always get along with the girls? It looks like everyone is always happy. I have talked about this before in a few vlogs, but it doesn't matter which culture you are a part of. There will always be struggles disagreements, arguments. We try our best to work it out with the people involved. 
I, I don't show things like that in vlogs because I feel like, question number six, does your colony have any vegetarians? Nope. Number seven, what is your favorite source, cookbook, etc., for new recipes? How often do you all try new recipes? Do you normally stick with the same routine recipes or try to add a new recipe every now and then? Pinterest. Or the food girls from other colonies post because those recipes are actually tried and true. If you use a Pinterest recipes, um, oftentimes it's better to try a small batch at home rather than bringing it to the kitchen, trying it for the first time, making a huge batch and then it being a flop. And you not knowing what you're supposed to do with all those leftovers. And yes, we try to have new recipes every now and then. If somebody has something new that they want to try, then we welcome the idea. Number eight, what are your favorite and least favorite things to cook or bake? Favorite would have to be soups. I'm in my element when I get to put together a soup. I just, I love it. And I, I don't think I have a least favorite. I have been trying to think since I have received this question and nothing comes to mind. What gadget or piece of equipment can you not do without, either at home or in the communal kitchen? In the colony kitchen, it would be this thing. It is one of my favorite things. I think we all love this thing. We have two huge ones in the bakery. So this medium sized mixer is perfect when the big ones are way too big in the bakery. I just love this, this, this mixer and I honestly don't know what I would do without it. Do you ever have someone in the community who eats more food than everyone else or sneaks food out of the kitchen during off hours? Yes, everyone needs and eats a different amount of food. And by all means, if you want food after the meal time is over, feel free to help yourself. We don't mind it and we actually like it when you do take some. It also lets me know that you like my food. What happens if you don't like anything being served for a meal? Do you have to eat in the community dining room or can you make a meal for yourself at home? Even if you don't like a particular food, there is always something else there. There are always veggies, salads, and most of the times a soup. And then there are also leftovers. So you can always find something that you like. I know you have big weeks and cook weeks. What are your other weeks like and what is the rotation of your weeks? They are just regular weeks. Nothing special. Baking and cook weeks are just dedicated weeks where you have a specific task. And any other week you do any other jobs that need to be done. How is a sourdough taken care of? Is someone specific taking care of it or is it on a schedule or rotation? Could you please show us how it is started and the process of feeding it, the maintenance part? Do you bake with yeast? Is it store-bought or homemade? We have only three people that make sourdough bread, so the three of us are in charge of feeding the sourdough starter. I included the feeding information in the sourdough vlog that I filmed in, I believe it was November-ish if you are interested and unfortunately I don't have a recipe on how to make a sourdough starter. I just got a little bit of sourdough starter from my cousin and she got it from a different colony and they got it from a different colony so it's just been passed around. I, I'm sorry but I don't have a recipe. We bake with yeast and it is store-bought. I honestly didn't know that you could make homemade yeast. It's interesting. If someone is not a good cook or a good baker what do they do during their turn to work in the kitchen? Does everyone go in the baking rotation? If not, does the colony look forward to weeks when certain people are cooking or baking? They still have to take their turn and they try their best and that's all that matters. Although we do look forward to certain cook weeks. What do you like to chef up when you are not making catering style meals for the community? Are you a balanced chef in both professional baking and cooking? Uh, desserts. Mostly yeast desserts like um, tea rings or danishes. I love working with dough. I am a home cook and I know my way around the kitchen, but I never went to school for it. None of us do. You have shown how when there is a menu item that takes a lot of labor, other ladies come and help. Things like pierogies, etc. Is it planned to do a group item a certain meal every week or just whenever? No, it's just whenever. If the cooks choose to do that for a meal. So if you don't know... When it comes to making pierogies, the cooks make the filling, they get everything ready, and then the ladies actually make the pierogies. How do you decide what to cook or bake when it's your cooking or baking week? Well, it's definitely easier during the summer months than it is during the winter months. The veggies are more and readily available. We also check by the meat that we have in the freezer. So let's say I wanted to have fish and chips for a meal. 
I would have to make sure that we have fish on hand and if we don't sometimes we are able to quickly get some for a meal and if not then I don't have it. Is the baking of bread and rolls for community dining room meals only or does it supply individual homes also? It's for both. It's for the kitchen and to take home. In your last baking video you made a lot of bread and buns. How long does that last and do you freeze any of it for later? We do put it into the freezer but it usually only lasts a week, maybe a week and two days. And it also depends on how much toast and bread the people on the colony like. I know for one, our colony, we like our, we like our bread. How do you guys handle people in the community having extreme food allergies? On a Hutterai colony, we take care of everyone. Our most common allergies are milk and wheat. If we have a dish that people with allergies are not able to eat, then we make the same dish but cater to their specific allergies. And that goes for any allergy or dietary need that someone might have. In order of worst to best, do you prefer a cook week, bake week or work week? That's actually a tough one because I like them all. I like to stay busy. I don't think I could pick because I love to cook, but I also love a work week because I love being outside. Do you have any fun history facts about a unique how to write dish? Do any of your older ladies have some fun stories about cooking for the community. So I actually reached out to older ladies and asked them this question and they said they'll have to think about it. So when they get back to me, I can put it into a future cooking vlog. I think it'll be fun. Have you contributed a recipe that is now part of the rotation during your regular cook week or bake week? Yes, actually, poutine. I was still cooking with my mom when we first had it. And now we have it quite often and a lot of cooks choose to have it in their cook week. And my mom also did scones, but that was before I was of cooking age. What is your favorite part about being in the kitchen, whether it's baking or cooking for the colony? Just what is your favorite part overall about being in the kitchen? I think I would have to say putting together dishes. I have always loved to cook and mix and bake, and this is where I get to be creative. Even cleaning out the fryers is not that bad. I know that in your videos you bring your own personal knives when you have a cook week. Are there also community knives that stay in the kitchen that anyone can use for their cook week? Yes, we also have knives that are always in the kitchen. We have a few smaller ones that are handy when someone comes and helps us with the prepping. But we do all prefer our own and we love the brand called Rada. Do you use instant coffee for the crowd or do you percolate it? Also what do you use at home? No, no instant coffee in the kitchen or at home. We have a little instant on hand just in case. And this is the rig that we use in the kitchen. <laughs> How do the new girls learn to cook or bake? Is there a training they go to? Do they follow an older girl during a cook week to watch and learn? Or do they pretty much learn to cook and bake at home? You learn as soon as you start cooking. Some girls like to make brownies, cookies, things like that at home which is a great way to start learning, but the rest gets taught when you turn 17 and you start cooking and baking for the colony and your partner is in charge of teaching you. Almost all of the plated food you sure looks really good, but portions look small. I don't know why I like this question so much. A recent example was the fried chicken sandwich. I think I would need at least two. Can people eat all they want? How are portions handled? If you want to, then you take two. We serve buffet style. You can take however much you want or need. Some people need more than others. The plates I show are my own and that's all I need. <laughs> what are some special occasion foods? That is something that changes from one colony to the next. But I would say for us, wings, ribs, store-bought fries. Yes, we do do the store-bought fries. We have fries every Thursday and Saturday and we chip them ourselves. They are our homegrown potatoes. We chip them and we fry them. But for special occasions, it would be store-bought fries. And then something maybe like bruschetta as well. How do you prevent cross-contamination? Feel and dunk. It's not that hard. You have different pots, pans, utensils, cutting boards, etc. Yes, in the long run, it's more dishes to wash, but it is important if someone has severe food allergies. Since everyone mostly eats together as a group, what do your home kitchens look like? And does the colony pay or the family? When you bake at home, do you have a typical stove with a cooktop and oven? Because you do so much large batch baking and cooking, do you still get pleasure in cooking for the family on a smaller scale? We don't have a typical stove with an oven. We have countertop convection ovens. We also sometimes call them toaster ovens. 
and smaller single induction hot plates. And I have to add that there are colonies that have the typical stove and then there are also colonies that do it the way that we do. And the colony pays for it. Oh yes, I enjoy cooking and it brings me pleasure either way. If I'm doing it at home on a small scale or for the entire colony. Can you read an own meal plan and tell who was cooking this week? What is the longest time two current cooking partners have been a team? On our colony, we have a sheet that we like to hang up with the weekly meals, as well as the names of who cooked and the date. And we keep them all. We don't throw any away. And they come in very handy when you need meal ideas, if it's your turn to cook. And as for the longest time cooking partners were together, that is hard to say. People come and go, they get married and move away, new ones start cooking and we shuffle around a bit, so it changes too much to keep track of. Leftover meals, do you have a compost system? Yes, out on the field and then it gets worked into the ground. Are leftovers put out as other options if someone might not like the main dish? Leftovers get put out throughout the week, so whenever it kind of makes sense. And if we have to remove a meal off the menu because we have too many leftovers, then we do that. And then there is one specific des designated meal that is for leftovers. Or must goes, as some people call them. Giselle, do you ever tire from cooking in the colony and in your home kitchen? No, I love it too much. And it doesn't come around that often, so it never gets old. Not quite a kitchen question, but kind of. If you love cooking and one of the other ladies prefer to bake, can you do a permanent switch? Can she always take your week and vice versa? No. I can only talk about my colony when saying this, but a cook week is more difficult and hectic than a bake week. In a bake week, you can go at your own pace and you are not pressured to have whatever you are baking ready at a certain time. You are also most of the time only in the bakery in the morning, whereas the cook week is an all-day thing with multiple meals. And then on top of those three meals a day that you have to make, you also have to prep for meals to come, etc. I don't think doing that would be fair. One person would always have an easier week than the other. On a colony, there there is no picking and choosing jobs that you would like to do. Everybody does everything. Put your heart and soul into whatever it is you are doing. Are you only permitted to bake dessert on certain days? I believe it used to be Thursdays. Or can you include a dessert with your meal anytime you choose, if you have the time and choose to do so? It is still Thursdays. Whoever is baking that week is in charge of making a weekly Thursday dessert. But if the cooks want to have one during the week, that is totally fine. Although in our colony, we don't mind if the cooks don't have a dessert during the week because we also have a weekly Sunday dessert as well. <laughs> There are some colonies that still do the weekly Sunday dessert, but then I also know a lot of colonies that don't do it anymore. Can people choose their cooking partner? Or how is this being organized? What happens if the group of women in cooking age is an uneven number? Do you then form a team of three? Okay, so first the choosing of the partners. No, not really. We just get put together with whoever works, and it also depends on availability. For me, my cooking partner was put into the kitchen as the second head cook and Amaris, my cousin and current cooking partner, came of cooking age, so we got put together. Another one might be if a mother is not yet 45, then she usually takes her daughter as a partner and she will be letting her previous partner go to be able to do that, so we might shuffle the partners around a little bit. When it's an uneven number. We do what we call dogvice which basically means that all the ladies and girls within the cooking age range take a turn cooking with that one person that doesn't have a partner. And we have more ladies and girls than days of the week, so it gets written down and continued from where we left off for the next time around. Are there recipes that are always made every week? There is Thursday lunch, which is fries, chicken and soup. It even has its own special name, Himmelspeis. Saturday at supper we have fries, but the sides and the main meal change. And then Saturday breakfast is always pancakes. But keep in mind, this is just the colony I come from. The Thursday lunch special is, is the one that I think just about every colony has every Thursday. <laughs> the rest are just for our colony, as far as I know. Do men and women eat separately? Do you get to visit or talk while you're eating? Segregated seating, yes. We do that, and it's often a pretty lively atmosphere in the dining room. <sighs> Sorry, <laughs> excuse the hair. The lawn needed mowing, and I love it, so I did it. So, continuing on. Once a 
girl marries, do her rotations in the kitchen change? If she becomes with child, does that change her duties? No, nothing changes. Can you show how you roll the dough to make a bun? Also, do you boil the dough when you make bagels? Bagel question first. We we'll put them on trays, put them into the oven and steam them. And that's in place of boiling them. And we have to do that because we have so many bagels, boiling them is a lot. This is how I was taught to roll buns. Wrap your hand loosely around your dough, making sure these two fingers touch and just, and just go in circular motions. Yeah. And then you have your bun. Do the school children go home for lunch or are they served lunch and snacks at school? They are served lunch in the children's dining room, which is a part of the kitchen. So I guess they go home. Do you have people who rarely eat in the community dining room because they prefer to cook for themselves? No. It's the best thing eating in the kitchen. So take me for example, if I am not cooking and I don't have to wash dishes, the bell rings, I can go eat and leave without having to clean up. And it's nice. It's very nice. I remember you said you have a head cook. Is this always a woman? How is she chosen and trained? Does she retire when she has children? Would she ever do an interview with you? Yes, it's always a woman. And no, she is not trained for that specific job. It is usually someone that has been cooking for many years and knows her way around the kitchen. A lot get voted into the position when they have children that are older. And no, no interview. Both of our head cooks don't want to be on YouTube and I respect that. Yes, a lot of colonies actually have two head cooks and they are on a rotation. So it all depends. On our colony, it's four weeks on, four weeks off. Do you ever look at cookbooks like Julia Child's, etc. and modify the recipes to the colony? Does growing your own food ever seem to complicate recipes? The only way that I might modify a recipe is to make it bigger. And I would say growing our own food makes it easier. I never have to worry if the ingredients that are need are available. And if the ingredients are not in the kitchen, then we just have to give the gardener a quick call, tell her when we need them, and she makes sure we get them. During one of your bread weeks, I thought you put chicken fat in your bread. I bake a lot of bread and never heard of doing that. Is that to add flavor or not to waste anything? Not flavor, no. Our recipes call for it. So think of it as the oil part of your bread. That is, if your bread calls for oil. From what time is a pregnant lady free from her kitchen and baking duties? And how long after birth will she stay at home with baby before she will start cooking and baking again? She is not free when she is pregnant. She is free for up to nine weeks after she has had her baby. If a dinha, that is what we call the girls who turn 15 and join the adults. If a dinha normally starts on the cook week rotation at 17, how is it handled for a girl who is still in high school? you multitask. Our classes are set up over what we call the ITV system. So kind of like a Zoom class, the teachers are in different colonies and the students also come from multiple colonies. We've been doing that for decades. And the classes are being recorded. So when we have a break from the kitchen, we go watch our classes and catch up. What if you have someone that doesn't like a particular ingredient, such as onions? Do they get to have something else? No, they don't get to have anything else. You try to find a middle ground and not add too many. If you really don't like them that much, you pick them out. What if someone is sick or has been sick and might need soup or clear diet? Okay, so that's a good question. You now know about the cooks and the head cook, but we also have a lady that cooks especially and only for the sick people. That is usually a lady that is over the age of 45 and she also cooks for ladies that have had a baby. Do you have honeybees in your community? If so, how many beekeepers? Yes, we do and we have two keepers. How is the life of a head cook different than any other woman on the colony? She is exempt from all other duties. Her work is in the kitchen, taking care and looking after all things kitchen related. And if we need anything or we have questions, we go to her. How long did it take you to become proficient in managing baking and cooking with all that industrial cooking equipment? It comes with time. You don't get the toughest jobs when you first start cooking. You ease into it and after a while you realize you know how everything works and how to use it. Do you have the chance to be creative in the kitchen? Do any of your family members ask you to serve a specific meal? Oh yes, which is why when it comes to cooking, I love the summer months the best. There is always an endless list of veggies for you to use and for you to be creative with. My family members do give me meal ideas and 
almost all of the time I ask them for things that they like that I could have because I do sometimes need ideas. How self-sufficient is your colony? How much of your food do you grow or raise versus, versus purchase? We raise our own veggies, although during the winter months we buy fresh greens. We also use what we canned and freeze during the summer months. And things like carrots, potatoes, parsnips, we just store them as they are. No special method required. Do Hutterites drink wine or alcohol at weddings or special occasions? We do make our own wine. What is a colony favorite dish? What was an example of an absolute failed dinner? I think there's actually quite a few, but I would say an egg McMuffin and a crispy chicken sandwich are something that is a never fail. As for a failed dish, there might be a few people that dislike a certain dish, but majority people like it. So I can't call it a failed dish because it's really not a failed dish. Do you still have very old German recipes, maybe handwritten in Fraktur? the old style cursive. Hopefully I pronounced that word right. I didn't know that it was called Fraktur. We call it Zitterling. We do have old German recipes that we still make and love, but not in that specific font, no. Some recipes would be cottage cheese pierogi, string bean soup, Wobak, etc. Hi Giselle, I know you have a cooking partner, but do you have a baking partner? I've seen in vlogs that you have help rolling buns, etc. And sometimes your mom helps you. But do you have an actual baking partner? As most of the time, it seems like you are on your own in there. The partner that I have when cooking is the same person that I have when baking. Every Thursday we have a weekly dessert and then she is there with me. But buns and bread we make on our own. And then my mom helps me with forming the loaves of bread and the girls help with rolling the buns. If there was ever a boy or man interested in cooking or baking, is this also something he could do as regularly as you? No. Although we do barbecue a lot during the summer months and the guys do that, so that's something that he could do if he wants to. There we have it. There's all 60 questions. Hopefully that was helpful. And you know, actually, there was somebody that had a question, I think it had to do with the special meals. In brackets they had suggestions, maybe like a pizza night. And we actually had pizza today. So today's June 2, it's a Friday. It's a normal day, not a special day, and we had pizza for supper. So yeah, we do sometimes have pizza. Homemade pizza crust? Homemade pizza? It's very good. It's a pizza is a is a meal our colony has as a kind of as a regular meal. And one last thing before I go. A cook week is not as easy as it looks. It can actually, at times, be tough. Um, that's it. That's everything. And I will see you in the next vlog. Bye.